All right, all right, all right. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Live from the bathroom, park next to, <laughs> park next to the virtual work red Corvette. I'm Donna M. Buller, and welcome to the Attitude Shift. We are actually shifters, and that is what we do best. And I could not shift this journey, this virtual red Corvette, without my lovely wing woman, Siobhan Shaw. Always, always, always trying to make it happen. How are you doing, darling? I am hot and bothered, <laughs> and that's a dream I actually have had <laughs> lately, so I'll be telling uh, our dream interpreter, our friend, our our titanium link, mm. Kelly Sullivan Walden, who is here with us, I'll be telling her all about my hot and heavy dream. <laughs> Can't wait to hear all about it. Hi, Kelly. You look great. <laughs> Thank you. I just have to say that you two, this was, this was, I, some people will be watching this and they don't know about all the behind the scenes stuff that's just gone on, but you guys are troopers and, and I appreciate you and I love you and I'm happy to be in this little red Corvette with you virtually, actually, on whatever level. So I'm so happy to be with you and I can't wait to hear about the hot and heavy. Oh, I know, I know, I know. We're going right Hot and bothered, it. hot and heavy. Bring it. Okay, I know, I know. I'm already, I'm in a room with no air conditioning and it's like 100 degrees outside. Uh -huh. um, but you look gorgeous. You look gorgeous. Yeah, Seriously. Red, red suits me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so here's the thing, Kelly. I put it on my Facebook page the other night, because or the other morning, because I had another one of these dreams. I seem to have sort of a series of dreams with the same person in it uh -huh. coming into the dreams. And so I put on my Facebook page, I wonder if people have the same dreams. And so then I tagged you, and that is how we ended up getting you on tonight. Yay. Because you said, oh, yeah. <laughs> you, you thought people could have the same dreams, and you went on to explain it better than, you know, in more depth than just sort of right, like right. So, way. so shall I just jump in for to say a few things on that before we hear the content? And content? Uh, yeah, I can't yeah. wait. Period. Well, there's Good. there is um, a gentleman named Robert um, Wagner who is, who's written a book on lucid dreaming that I happen to know and have interviewed myself, and he and he he's had millions of lucid dreams. I don't know about millions hundreds of thousands and he said that in some of his dreams and he's done experiments with other lucid dreamers and where they where they decided to meet in a dreamscape and and when they met in the dreamscape some lucid dreamers were aware later oh yeah I saw you in that dreamscape wow. we, they were able to see and then others weren't able to remember so the issue even though he saw them and they were there but they were they would walk by kind of without seeing him and even though they were there, they didn't know they were there. So the issue of somebody actually dreaming about you when you dream about them, I don't know what the statistics are exactly, but I would say on some level, on a parallel plane of some kind, we we absolutely are actually connecting with people when we are dreaming. And that means if we're connecting, then there then there's some way that they're feeling that and they're connecting as well. The issue isn't whether or not we're actually connecting with them. The issue is whether or not they remember. So, yeah. so just like with any dream, I mean, it's like you can have, you know, you can have a really point, or in in real life, you can have a really poignant moment with somebody and know that it was really true and really valid, and you might remember it your whole life, and you knew it really happened, and you might run into that person and say, "Hey, remember when we were standing by that tree and that song was playing, and I was wearing that red dress." And they're like, um, I'm sorry, I don't remember it. So it's not a matter of whether or not it actually happened or whether there was an actual connection made. It's an, it's an issue of memory because there's so much that's constantly happening to all of us in our virtual, our dreaming, our actual lives that we don't necessarily all remember all of that and track it all. But that doesn't mean that it wasn't a valid experience and that you, Siobhan, didn't actually connect with, oh, Oh, hello. Oh my hello. god, I'm, my dog. Okay. Sorry, she's, uh, she's I might like, have to bring in my Lola who's on the other side of the door trying to bark and get in. Oh. Right so, um I might just have to do that. But I so I I don't know if this is I you know, it's not exactly the most perfect answer, but I think 
yes, if you have a significant dream about somebody, yes, they felt it on some level. Do they remember? Wow. Do they wake up knowing for sure? We can't. I don't know that we can know that unless you check in with them and let them know and, and do a little investigation. Yeah. Do a little yeah. cyber snooping. Yeah. I, you showed up in my dream several times, dream after dream, and uh, it started to get hot and heavy. <laughs> well, you just checking. Was it good for uh, you? No. <laughs> no, I'm not telling that person. <laughs> That's what I'm yeah. curious about, Kelly, is, is just that when we have these hot and heavy you know, dreams, and mm -hmm. out of the blue like that. My dream certainly isn't hot and heavy like Siobhan's, but just like I was uh, telling her earlier, I'm smelling a man's cologne. I d I've never Ooh, smelled wow. this smell before. I know this gentleman. He's a very familiar face, but I can't remember where I saw him. He, I feel warm when I'm around him. I feel safe wow. around him. But when I'm out of the dream and Throughout the day, I can remember engaging in conversation with him. I couldn't tell you what he looks like to save my life, but he feels so comforting and he smells so good. Okay, there's a woman named Caroline Zanny. Caroline, I believe her middle name is E. Zanny. You can look her up on Facebook and friend request her. She wrote a book called Piper Now and Again, and it's about this woman who has a really incredibly strong sense of smell in her memories. So she smells memories and she smells people from past lives, and that's how that's her connection to it. And I just was on the phone with her yesterday talking about this phenomenon, and it's rare. Most people are tend to be more um, auditory or visual or kinesthetic, the sense of smell and connection isn't as typical, but it's really valid and very true. So I, having this synchronicity of having just spoken with this woman yesterday who has this incredibly strong smell, lavender and burnt raisins and, and a few other smells that are so specific <coughs> that relate to this man that she knows there was, there was a connection with from hundreds of years ago. So, I just feel so good when I'm around him, and I don't. Well, I don't know if it's sexual or if it's. I don't know what it is, but it's something, and I don't want to wake up. <gasps> absolutely don't. And and no offense to my husband or whatever, because mm. I don't know what the connection is. If it is that, but I never want to leave his presence. Well, how beautiful and what a, <coughs> what a gift! What a gift that is. And uh, to me, I think our dreams are so much on the level of our soul and so much connecting us with the soul of those who are our soulmates. And when we're alive in our waking lives, often our ego, the bills and blah, 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 all the stuff that we have to deal with that can disconnect us from that juicy soul level can happen. It's kind of like static on the line. But when we're asleep and when we're dreaming, especially if we're advanced souls like you are, the two of you, you can, you can have these deeper connections and it's like there's nothing in the way. So to me this is such a beautiful example of how the soul, the, how there's a continuity of, of soul and love and connection that it doesn't end just when the two bodies aren't physically connected. I mean to me the gift though, the blessing is always how are you going to use that energy and bring it into this life because it's not about wanting to just stay asleep and, and, and mourning the sweetness of that and coming into this life and this life paling in comparison but it's kind of your job I would imagine if it were my dream I would say the the charge is to bridge the gap and bring as much of that energy into present time write about it draw it paint it do something that honors it like what what can you do besides talking about it in this beautiful soulful way that you have I mean, you're honoring it right now but what else could you do to honor that? Look for that smell. Put it on something. Talk to somebody if you notice that they're wearing a similar scent. And remember the way that that felt to be in that person's presence. So what might you do to honor that? I think that's neat. And we talked about energy. And I told Siobhan I was going to ask you that. You just said yourself, how do we bring, we have that much power that we can bring energy from our dreams into our reality. 
Oh my God, absolutely. Well, my my fun little statistic that I like to throw around because I'm a hypnotherapist from the American Hypnosis Association. They say that our 12% of our mind's power is our conscious mind and 88% of our mind's power is our subconscious mind and, oh. and all that that is. So, so oh. we're sitting here, we're these, we are these microcosms of the entire universe and we're sitting here, these bodies having these conversations and we look like we're these separate beings having, having these and we're, we look small and limited and all that but in reality we're so infinite and to me the game of life and the game and our and the way that our dreams can help us is that the game is to while we're here in these bodies to embody consciously as much of that totality of who we are while we're in form wow. and we see when we see when we go to those um, beautiful churches in Europe and we see those glowing avatars Jesus Mary and all of, mm -hmm. all of them it's like they glow because they've embodied so much more of their capacities than than the average folks but just like Jesus said and I'm not a Bible thumper but I think Jesus rocks he said <laughs> this and greater things can ye do yes you know, like you can walk on water too you can walk through walls you can heal the sick you can channel you can bring all that stuff in it's it's what is your legacy it's what your inheritance is and most of us are just living on a teeny little welfare check piece of that when we really are like heirs to millions and millions and millions of of dollars and that's just a metaphor of like what we right, right. what's ours to to have so when we dream these rich dreams like you just did in some way i feel like you're bringing in another another aspect of yourself so with the goal being how much can you can you get as close to a hundred percent of you as possible so you just brought in another 25 percent of you and and there's still more that's not it I mean it, wow. you know, there's more and more that's and more could Donna that's, and I be dreaming about the same person could you be yeah because I also it, as she was talking about not wanting to wake up from the dream there was mm. this comfort level ah. I went oh yeah that's oh. another aspect of my dream with this person oh. and mm. although I wouldn't want well I wouldn't want to be intimate with him <laughs> right, <laughs> right, but I never I, have been do you know what I mean it, it's just kind of like wow it, it, it almost feels like I should be there mmm so well and I don't know if that's, I'm interpreting this I mean, I think in our in our human form, we translate closeness like it doesn't. It's it's hard to get any closer to a human than we get when we're having sex with them. So when we want to get close to someone, we think, well, I have to mesh my body with theirs because we can't imagine another way to get close. But from a soul spirit level, whew, there's no separation. We're completely connected. So. I don't know if we need to necessarily have sex if you're if you're having that soul spirit connection you're there you're there and that comfort comes from dropping into that I don't know I mean I, I feel like there's more to the story of this I, it sounds like it was two different things the guy that you Donna had this dream about is maybe somebody that you've never met in this life and Siobhan right. the guy that you're having the recurring dream is somebody that you do know in this life never were necessarily intimate with or never necessarily attracted to in that way but yet in the dream whoa what is this it's like a is that, it, but yet it, it the common denominator is that both of you feel really good really satisfied yeah, absolutely. And like I feel yummy. refreshed I feel it's just the weirdest thing I can recall you know right at the split second of waking up that I'm with this person Mm. You know, and I just, I mean, when I say right at the split second of waking up, I wake up and I'm like, it's almost like I can reach over and touch them, that they're there, that they're there. And it's so powerful. And it's, it was, it was just something at first that, you know, I didn't pay much attention to, but then it started just flashing. How can a face flash you have a that character? you've ever seen? Cool. Okay. Oops, are we losing each other? I don't know. Are, are you guys disappearing? Siobhan is disappearing. Is she melting? Are you there, Siobhan? 
There you are. There you are. There you are. Uh oh. Uh oh, she's going in little pieces. But you know what? I'll I'll address what you were saying. If you okay. Can you okay. hear me, Donna? Yeah, I can hear you. Yes. So we'll wait until we can get Siobhan okay. back back on. Um, it's kind of it's amazing. Um, I mean, this virtual way that we're able to look at each other, it's it's I all know. kind of magical. I mean, what a gift. So we get upset when we disconnect, but exactly. the reality is is that Dude. oh my God, we've just conjured each other. That's right. Um, there's God, there's so much. Um I think that that feeling, the feeling of being connected, like just looking at your face as you talk about this dream, it's like you need to be a painting right now. That look on your face is so gentle, so soft. You can tell. I mean, look at that there's that something transpired. It's, yes. And that is that is so real. Um, I, I I had the opportunity to be on the Bethany Frankel show a little mm -hmm. while ago before her before the show went off the air, and mm -hmm. and on the show it, we talked about sexual dreams, and really I think mm -hmm. sexual dreams kind of is the umbrella subject for any dream that's about an intimate connection right. in a dream. And, and I felt, and one of the things I said on that show, and it just kind of came ripping through me was. I really want to change the way we see these kind of dreams. I want to eradicate any bit of shame or any bit of sorrow of like bittersweetness that it's over. It's like because the reality is is that there's only this moment and it's all happening now and by virtue of the fact that you have a memory you can bring it in and soak that nectar up for all it's worth and you don't have to mourn it or grieve it like it's a past memory your job is to stay connected with it throughout the day and stay and bring it fully into your life Carl Jung the late great father of psychotherapy mm -hmm. would he would say that um, in every woman there is the masculine energy which he would which it's like the yin and the yang there's the anima and the animus so for a woman, we connect with the animus. That's the masculine aspect of ourselves, which Carl Jung would say is our soul. And for a man, oh, I hear that little doggy. Bring him in. My dog's going to start barking too. I can feel it. Um, and and then for the for a, a man, it's the anima. For a woman, it's mm -hmm. the animus. And when we have a dream like this, in a way, you're connecting with your animus. You're connecting with that. It's like your the aspect of you that is masculine but it's your soul he said and this is kind of you know debatable he said that women have a masculine soul and men have a feminine soul wow. and whenever we're connected with that part of ourselves we feel like okay we're in our bodies okay we're alive okay we're present okay we're accounted for okay now we can we can do our lives now like the lights are on in someone's home so at the very least, these dreams that both of you have shared feel like they're they're your animus showing up, and you don't necessarily have to look for the look for that external person and try to even connect with them because it happened within you, and they in some way may have just been a, a catalyst, a beautiful, right. wonderful catalyst to honor. But it's it's happening in you. So bravo to you too. That's awesome. I I love that. I I'm do. gonna get my Lola. Can I bring my dog in? Hold on yes, one second. Absolutely. Okay. And, and while you're doing that, maybe Siobhan, we, we do have a couple of questions that people wrote to us, huh? We do, but she's not going to be able to hear us. She's going to talk Lola in. That's great. This is, uh, this is, this is, what, this is what we do. Tuned in to <laughs> Woof. Woof. Me. Uh, this is what we do. And, and you know what? Love how to away. Okay. No, she's Where is she? She's gone? Oh. No, she's back. Only one little star today. <laughs> Do we have two? There's always room for stars here. I just think it's really cool that the energy, I mean, you could feel the energy as you were sharing, you know, your dream. And because I know, I'm familiar, it, you could definitely feel that, just like she said, I could feel that, you know... <laughs> Well, yeah. well, I actually haven't told all my dreams, so it, it oh, started right. long, it started, I don't know how long ago, Donna, 18 months ago, these dreams started, and there's a series of these dreams. Hi, Lola, how are you? Lola's going to do the dream interpretation tonight. <laughs> <laughs> 
She's really good. Um, so Lola, <laughs> Lola, so I love Lola. Um, Lola, so this is a series of dreams I've been having, and it the person showed up uh, in a trench coat the first time, and his back was to me, and I knew who it was. Right away, I knew who it was, and he brought all these people in to do stuff, fix things, <laughs> make stuff happen, right? So sort of directing everything around, and Donna was there. And then as, as I continue to have a, these dreams, there's all kinds of different scenarios and different people. Donna's quite often nearby in, this, in these dreams, but, the, but it's like I'm getting closer to this person. And last time I was up against a wall, like kissy face with him. So I was like, okay, what's that about? And what's that about? We have unfinished business. You know, we didn't have life. business. We haven't had a conversation about it. Right. right? In real life, you have unfinished business. Was it related to anything that happened in the dream or totally unrelated? Or is it too, too personal to say? Um, it would be related to the person coming in and, and kind of directing an event. Okay. Okay, so let me just get this straight. So you are you are directing an event, and he walks in. Or wait, so... Yeah, I guess I, I would be part of the event. I would be one of the people involved in the event. What was the event? A TV show. A television show. Was it your TV show? Yes. <laughs> oh. Donna and I. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, I know. So, so yeah. okay, wait. So it's your TV show, and he shows up as as a. Is he directing the show? Is he part of the? What's his job? Yeah, that's what he comes in as. Yeah. So he's supportive of your show, and he's wearing a trench coat. Yeah, like Columbo. <laughs> And it's got a, it's got a, it's got dirt on the back. It's got yeah, dirt on the back. Like, it's all scuffed on the back. It's just probably because I've been kicking them. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> okay, I have. I only see his back, and then I, as the, as the series of dreams go along, I, he starts, I start to interact with him, and there's people that come and go through it. Don is not always in the dreams, but especially lately. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, I don't want to be a part of like some peeping Tom watcher thing. <laughs> um, and, and and the dreams are just getting more intense and more intimate. And I am like Donna, so when she said that that she felt comfortable and she kind of didn't want to wake up from the dream, right. I started feeling that, and then I'm like, ooh, that's kind of weird, because right, yeah, I have those right. kind of feelings for this person, right? Okay. It, Wow. He would be right, like a brother, maybe. Right, he's got, Kelly. So he's got more of a brotherly energy. I, I'm just having a, and this might be my own projection, I don't know, but I, I think it's really interesting because you, these are just, this is just off the top of my head. So you actually are in the process of getting a TV show together, right? Or yeah. is that, I mean, that's yeah. like on the well, table, right? We've been writing pitches and lots of pitches, right? Yeah. So Donna, Donna and I, yeah, we got into Lifetime. Uh, 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 we won, won, we didn't win the, the big enchilada, but we got into the semifinals last year. <laughs> wow. Oh, my God. Okay. So that's pitching, amazing. We pitched NBC uh, this year, and we're pitching New York Television Festival again with Lifetime. They've invited us back to pitch again. And so, so but I'm, we're always pitching. Like, there's always these ideas, and I'm always working on sh TV show ideas, as well as the Attitude Shift show that we think should be a television show with all our Attitude Shifting friends. They should all be on it with us. Um, but, you know, in the back of my mind, we have our own show, mm -hmm. just because we have this show. So... So, I mean, I, I would, there's so much that I want to ask you about, but I'm, I'm going to just kind of throw some things out there. We can do it in, in backwards in a sense. I feel like this man, and he wearing a trench coat, you said like Columbo. So that to me, 
feels like he's. I mean, my first thought is uh, somebody with a trench coat has a surprise. Like there's going to reveal something. But it yeah. also feels like I feel the passion that you have for your show, and it feels like. You making out with him feels like almost like if it's my dream, it feels like I'm making out with the show. Like there's this, it's not just something that that I want with my mind and with my heart, but it's also my body. Like it's all like body, mind, spirit, and soul, all kind of lining up in this passionate building, building, building embrace. And and this man represents like. Cuckoo! Like, like I'm gonna, like almost like a flasher. Like I'm gonna show you. Like I'm gonna reveal to you. Wow! That this is real. And sometimes it takes us. Like you know, a lot of people talk about manifesting, like the secret and blah blah blah. I mean, one way to manifest is to harness all of you in into something. Into like to even to harness even your sexuality, your tantric energy toward. Your desire, and not doing it from for the purpose of manipulation, but like, really, universe, I'm lined up here. We're like ready to go. So to me, it feels like such an affirmation. It doesn't necessarily feel like it's about the guy. It feels more like he's a symbol of the show itself, and you're showing up, and you're passionately like. Oh, that's what it feels like to me. <laughs> um, oh, that's, oh, I love that interpretation because most people would be, well, you just are hot for the guy or something. Right, right. I love that because that makes total sense because Donna and I, for the past several years, obviously, everybody knows we've been trying to get, you know, make this show bigger and better and, and kind of get it out there. And, yeah. and at the same time, we've started pitching and and we've had some success and interest from people right for yeah. different new ideas we've had and and then we kind of got into the semifinals of this yeah. New York television festival slash lifetime um, unscripted reality development pipeline contest and and you know Donna got to go to New York City and you know hang out in the Big Apple and all that kind of stuff and wow and then we've been writing pitches and we have another partner that we just wrote a pitch with for NBC um, and we just got the invite today, Donna just got it in her email, to pitch again at the New York Television Festival for Lifetime. Okay. And, and so it's, it's all I do other than, you know, grunt work that I do and so looking after my responsibilities here at feels, home. So. This feels like... Um, it feels like this the show there's so much of your energy that feels like really lined up like if i was god if i was the universe i would say oh give these women their sh their show for god's sakes i mean they're ready they they've done the work they show up they're they're great you're talented you're fabulous you i mean and even just as as evidenced by what happened before the show tonight and how it was rough you stuck with it and here we are you popped through and and we're doing this and this is it's like the way you do anything is the way you do everything so I think it's it's amazing. Um, I feel like when you when you show up to do like for the next meeting, the next pitch that you have, I would say I always I always take whatever there's like relics of our dreams that we can take into our real life to honor the dream, which is in a way honoring our soul, honoring the spirit. I would take that makeout session energy of you being in your Aphrodite because there's as a businesswoman, there's a lot of <laughs> <laughs> you, you're, it's like it's intense energy to be in Athena mode, which is like charge. I'm going to make it happen. Get the pitch. Get the get the elements together. But sometimes you can leave the juiciness out because it's like to get to dot all the I's and cross all the T's. It takes a lot of energy and so much where it's like I don't have enough room or energy for my for my passionate Aphrodite self, which is such an important part of of your presentation. You're right. you both are beautiful women, and I think connecting with this part of the dream before you go out and present yourself would just be a way to bring in that that juiciness. I, I feel like it's part of your success formula. It's a wonderful oh. gift from the dreaming. Oh, that's wonderful. That's very exciting. Now, before, we need to finish this show up in, oh, yeah. <laughs> in minutes. But uh, we have some people who have written in and, and kind of given a, a sort of a short synopsis of what their dreams are. So. Okay. Okay, so we have one whose stepsister 
um, was in his dream, and he never sees the stepsister. It's been a very, very long time. Mm -hmm. And um, he saw her picture in black and white. Mm -hmm. And then the black and white suddenly came to life in color, and it was unimaginably beautiful, he said. Wow. And is that the dream? Is that the whole... Yeah, that's the, the pretty much the whole dream. Um, he said he had a feeling it was her funeral, um, but he he doesn't think she's dead. <laughs> like nobody's, <laughs> told, nobody's called to say that, you know, mm. your stepsister's dead. No, they haven't said that. Mm. One, of the, one of the things that I think about, and I, I actually not that long ago had a dream about uh, my cousin it brings tears to my eyes because I really miss him. Somebody that I haven't been haven't been around in a long time, and and the dream like was really emotional. And I felt like, oh my God, what does this mean? Does it mean that something's happened to him, or what is it? And I think when we dream about somebody who we care about, that we've been connected to, and we're no longer connected to, just like we talked about at the beginning of this show, like were they actually dreaming about us too? Maybe, maybe they're reaching out for us in the same way that we're reaching out to them. And there's a place where there is an actual connection taking place. Um, I also feel like there's a there's synchronicity involved with these dreams sometimes. Like I in my dream formula that I talk about kind of in depth in the book that Donna's in, both of you are in my book and it's all in your dreams, but I, I talk about the the D R E A M. The A is for activation. It's about honoring your dream in your waking reality in some way. So when I had this dream about my cousin, even though I hadn't talked to him in years, I reached out. I did a little research and found a phone number for him and I texted him and got a response and he said I'm not ready to reach back out but thank you and I felt like okay I did my part we can only do our part and maybe there's something I mean I, I've heard so many stories of people that have a random dream about somebody they've been out of touch with and they reach out to them in real life and it turns out it was the perfect moment they don't find this out till later but there's no accident that he had this dream about her. It's curious about the black and white and then coming into color. For me, black and white represents something old, something ancient, maybe a past life, maybe maybe an aspect connected in a past life. It, I don't know. I mean, you never know. I'm but sometimes black and white. I mean, I think dreams are about wordplay as well, like black and white. Sometimes we see things in black and white good, bad, right, wrong, like was the reason that they disconnected over an issue that was a black and white issue? Was that, who knows, who knows? But no. Yeah, no, her mother died, that's all. And ah, mm. well, you know, some, you never know. I mean, black and white, those pictures, um, I remember the movie Pleasantville. I don't know if you ever remember I love that, that movie. Yes. So it makes me think of how, like the, the movie is a metaphor about how black and white and everything's kind of nice and orderly mm -hmm. and perfect and the moment color, into, into, color comes into it kablam and color can tend to represent passion and aliveness and beauty and like zest so I, I get I kind of get excited and chills when I think about this color going it going from black and white into beautiful color it makes me feel like mm, there's something still alive in this connection still worth worth reconnecting with somehow um, it's not over and and at the very least because we can only like in any relationship we can only do what's on our side of the street we can't go over and make the other person talk to us or we can't go we can only do our very best and one way that we can do that is it I always tell people if they're not participating doing their part on the soul level you can still connect to them so I would if if he was listening I would say on you know have, do a meditation light a candle get a picture of this person and say a prayer from your spirit to their spirit and say gosh I'd really love to love you know I'm sending sending good vibes your way and if you feel like reaching out in the actual reality then please feel free otherwise I'm sending you good vibes and connecting soul to soul with you and that's that's valid so I hope that's that's helpful. awesome um now, here's a couple of people. I just asked them their best, worst dream they've had recently on my Facebook page. So somebody said that they were somewhere like Iran and terrorists were chasing her and trying to kill her. Oh, oh wow. 
Well, I don't know what her real life circumstances are. I mean, I always like to do the reality check aspect and say, wow, are you, you know, is there any kind of danger that's in your life? Do you need to be careful of, you know, are you actually in Iran? Are you, I mean, if not, if she's not. out here, okay. Then, I know who she is. She's okay. not here. So I always play, I always look at the word play. So I ran. It's interesting. And this game is about her running from people. So one of the most commonly remembered dreams is dreams of being chased. Mm -hmm. And I always, from when, if, if it was my dream, I would, I would say, what am I running from? What's scaring me right now? And what, what you're running from might be worth running from. It might be an adverse energy that you want to set some boundaries with. But from the big perspective, and Donna, we this is one of the things that we talked about in that big dream session that we had on the air at first. Right. My, mm -hmm. my personal point of view is instead of running from that energy, why don't you turn around and face it? And my, my, my formula for that is F-E-A-R, face it, embrace it, ace it, and replace it, meaning you know, like find out what that energy is all about, like you did so bravely with regards to your dad um, and in that in that dream so that it was no longer something that you needed to be afraid of. Nope. Nope. So I'm curious about about um, this woman who who's doing the chasing and and perhaps this isn't always some people disagree with me um, but I like to say if you're, if you're running from somebody who's angry find out well is that have you disconnected from the angry mm -hmm. part of you the part of you that's like pissed off about something and you haven't allowed yourself to embrace that shadow. So it's usually about doing some shadow work. Okay. And we have Michael. He is falling but never hits the bottom. That's typical Ooh. of a dream, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I hear all kinds of falling dreams. Falling is another, I think it's a really important dream actually. The, the typical point of view from an interpretation perspective about falling dreams is that you may be overwhelmed over your head, not feeling grounded, wow. feeling like there's too much, too fast, and you don't feel that sense of like feeling tethered to the earth. My metaphysical perspective on falling dreams, and I get this from the Sinoi, from the highlands of Malaysia, their, their belief is that falling dreams are really good because we have these falling spirits that are calling us into our depth and if and we haven't landed into that depth that deep deep place yet but the goal is to practice landing well practice thing mm -hmm. like giving into it because deep isn't bad deep is good we often in this western world we live up here we kind of <laughs> hyperventilating doing so much and we can never quite catch up and we, we're breathing shallow and yet there's this vastness of who we are if we could just drop into it we'd feel so much more grounded like the oak tree deep roots so to me if he hasn't landed yet it just means that he hasn't yet found his roots but they're there so practice falling well. And we can Jennifer would be beside herself if we didn't ask about this. And oh. I, there's a couple of things she actually asked about. Um, one of her worst dreams is that she's in trouble because she doesn't know the answer. Ooh, I wonder if is it a school scenario? Is that is that all she told you? Yeah, that's all she said. She's in trouble because she doesn't know the answer. There's there's an interesting point of view that, that comes to my mind. People that don't like, um, like people that worry about being a good enough mother are usually really good mothers. People that worry about getting enough done are usually people that are highly productive. So people that don't know the answer to something and worry about that probably are really smart and she probably has so much of it buttoned up and ready to go. But of course, in this infinite world, there's always something. But to me, she's probably, I might imagine her, she's probably an A-type personality that, that feels like there's always one more thing that she's got to get done and understand and figure out. But if, if she were in my, if she were me, I would go, wait a minute, let me give myself a break. And maybe, like Einstein, let's go to Einstein. Einstein would say that he didn't, he didn't remember much. He didn't keep it in his head. He didn't know his mother's birth date. He, because he wanted to keep his mind open for inspiration to find him. And he said something about, why would I want to clutter my mind with every bit of trivial 
bit of data when that's valuable real estate that, and I don't think he used real estate as a metaphor, but you get the drift, that he mm -hmm. wanted his mind to be as open as possible so that inspiration could have a place to land. So I would say to your friend or who, your, your listener, watcher, participant in your attitude shift family, I would say to her, it's a, like find a place of okayness, not having it all figured out because it's not up to you to have to figure it all out. There's something bigger than you that you can have a connection with that can help you make it a lot more graceful. And it does awesome. touch at the show in park, but I can you come on my wall or on the attitude shift wall, I guess, yeah. message on the attitude shift wall about night terrors. We've had a lot of people asking about that. And Thank I know you. on our blog talk radio show, one of the times we asked about that, you gave a great answer. So if if you could, please, just write a short little yeah. answer on our page so everybody can read it. That'd yeah. be great. But it Absolutely. is time. Put it okay. in part, Donna. Thank you. Right. My pleasure. Kelly, love you so much. Oh my gosh, I can just stay riveted to you and watch you and listen to you, mm. you know, all night. And we're gonna have you back on again real soon. Kelly, where can we find you? You where can find you? me at Kelly Sullivan Walden com and I have all kinds of free dream goodies and blessings for your for your listeners if they're new to dreams or whether they're veterans, I've got some free ebooks and audios that they can get at kellysullivanwalden.com. They can also get a free 15-minute dream inquiry session with me if they go to dreamlifecoachtraining.com. I have a dream life coach training coaching program that's really awesome, and I have a few free gifts that I can give them from there as well. On Facebook, Kelly Sullivan Walden, Doctor Dream. Doctor Dream. Twitter, Kelly S. Walden. So. All right. So much, you amazing okay. women. You make. I love you so much, Jane. Siobhan, thank you as always for keeping us going. You know, I'm not going to end the show with any kind of tickets or citations tonight. I'm just going to tell everyone to dream big. Dream big and never stop dreaming. Stay away from the nightmares. Until we meet again, <laughs> until we talk again, look for us on Facebook. Siobhan Shaw on Facebook. Donna M. Butler on Facebook. The Attitude Shift on Facebook. And our book, Journey of the Soul Car. All on Facebook. We make it easy for you. Talk again next week. See you soon. Love you both. Peace out. Vroom, vroom.